Hey, what's going on? Thanks for joining me today. Today I'd like to teach you how to use synthetic division to solve the following problem of 9x cubed minus 9x squared plus 18x plus 5, which is then being divided by 3x minus 1. So how do we approach this? Well, first, you create a nice little synthetic division table, okay, uh, where every your coefficients, okay, for your dividend will go into the fall, the top row here inside of that synthetic division table. Okay, so if you had if you had like five terms, you would have added another you know column to this thing. All right. In any case, you place in your uh, the coefficient next to the highest x value, meaning the highest powered x value, right in the first spot. And then you're going to go right on down the list. So negative 9 gets placed in the second, positive 18 gets placed in the third, and then positive 5, I'm just going to leave out the signs because that's assumed to be positive. If, let's say, though, hypothetically, that this, let's say, one term wasn't there and it went x cubed, x squared, nothing, and then your constant, you can actually write in, and you should write in, plus 0x. The reason being is because you need this format in order to make this a synthetic division work. Okay? So... What you would do is you would plug in 0 here for 18. Now, so basically, if you have a cubic, you should have four terms. If you had a, uh, if that wasn't there, and you had just a, you know, regular quadratic, then you'd have only three terms, etc. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what do we put over here? Because we have to fill out the entire row uh, of the top. We have to fill out the entire top row. So what goes there is going to now, we're going to do something here to your divisor. And what you have to do is you have to solve your divisor. Uh, you have to solve this for x when it's equal to 0. In other words, we need to find the value of x here that makes this function equal to 0. So in order to do that, we simply take that function and set it equal to 0. Now your job is just to solve for x. So you add 1 to both sides, and then you would divide by 3, right? Easy peasy. So x here is going to be equal to now 1 third. All right. And now this term, whatever it is, whatever that value is, whatever your zero is, I know it's one third, but they call it a zero, right? Math is confusing. Um, we're going to take that term and plug it on in here. So we're going to put one third. Now, after you have this table set up, we're going to follow a simple series of steps in order to find now the coefficients of your quotient. Remember, the quotient is the answer when you take your dividend and you divide it by your divisor. Isn't the language great? I love it. So what we're going to do, your first term, you're simply going to take it and drop it right down. So a 9, that's why I have this kind of colored in red. You're not going to do anything there. Then the next step is, I'm going to repeat this pattern. You're going to take whatever the value is here, multiply it by whatever this first term is, and then you're going to place its value right to, into the adjacent cell. Okay. So what's one third of nine, or in other words, what's one third times nine? Remember, it's really nine over one, so it's nine over three, right? And that's just going to be equal to three, okay? Hopefully at this stage in the game that that's good. If that's not, you definitely want to go back and review that, okay? So then what you're going to do is you're going to add the results of this column together. So negative nine plus a positive three should be now a negative six. What you're then going to do is repeat the process. Take this value, multiply it by this value, so one third times now a negative 6. Remember, that's really over 1, so that's negative 6 over 3, and that's going to be then a negative 2. Plug that result now on into that adjacent cell, so negative 2. Cool. Clean up a little bit of space here. And now you're going to add these terms together again in that column. So 18 minus a 2 is going to be a positive 16. Now what you'd have to do is find 16 and 1 third, right? 1 third of 16. So you're going to take 1 third, multiply it by then 16 over 1, you're going to hit 16, whoops, 16 over 3. And what do you think that works out to be? Well, it doesn't really work out to be anything nice, right? It doesn't work out to be something nice, not a whole number. So instead of using like mixed numbers and whatever, I'm just going to leave it as 16 over 3. You could use a decimal if you wanted, but it'd be better not to. So this is 16 over 3, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we have to add this column together, and we're going to find then the result here. Now, remember when you add... You're going to take your 5, so it's really 5 over 1, and you're going to add to it 16 over 3. In order to do this addition, remember, you need common denominators. So what I have to do here to the first function, uh, not the first, but the first fraction, is I'm going to multiply the denominator by 3, and whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. 
So if I multiply both by 3, that's now going to be 15 over 3, plus now 16 over 3, should be equal to now 31 over 3. And this is indeed now your value. Okay, 31, 31 over 3. Cool. Now, what do these coefficients and stuff represent down here? Well, this represents now your remainder. Okay, this represents your constant term. In other words, there's no x associated with that. This will represent your x of the first term. This will represent your x of the second term. And you can kind of imagine what's going to happen if we keep on going, right? x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, blah, 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 x to the 10 millionth, depending upon how many values you have. Hopefully you don't get 10 million values. Otherwise, I'll see you in 10 years. So what do we do from here? Well, you don't want to stop, by the way, because the problem isn't done. Okay, the problem is not done. You got to do one more step. Okay, one more step. So whatever the coefficient here, so you got to focus on your divisor. Okay, whatever if there is, or whatever, well, there should be. Whether it's a one or it's another number, it totally depends. But there will be a coefficient here. Whatever the coefficient is of your x term in your divisor must now be the value that you're going to divide everything by, except for your remainder. Do not divide the remainder by 3. Okay, All of your coefficients. This is technically not a coefficient. It is a remainder. Okay, Remember this c represents constant. That's the constant x value of x to the power of 0, which is just one. So before we conclude now, let me just erase this. Okay. You're going to take now this three and you're going to divide it now into each of the terms over here, not the remainder. And what do we get? So here we're going to have a value of three, right? Here's going to be a value of negative two. Now here's a value of 16 over three. You're going to leave it. It's unfortunately not pretty, but that's what it is. And then here we're going to leave 31 over 3. Okay, 31 over 3. Okay, now, all you have to do, like we were saying, this is the, the 3 was the coefficient of your x squared term, so simply put that on in. This negative 2, okay, had a, was the coefficient of the x term. This is now your constant. It's a positive, so put in the positive there. And then this was also positive, so just add it. Remember, that's the remainder. Now, one thing about the remainder is when you have a remainder, whatever the number is here, whatever it is, I don't care what it is, it could be some stupid fraction like it is now, or it could be zero, it doesn't really make a difference. You're gonna put that remainder over, over your divisor. So 3x plus, not plus, minus one, okay? So this is it, I'm just gonna clean up that minus sign to make it look more like a negative, uh, more like a, a subtraction symbol, excuse me. And this is it, what it is, that's your answer. Whether you've got to simplify this from a complex fraction to something else, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. That This is the value now. This is the answer. This is the quotient, okay? So when you take this value, divide it by this value, you get this thing. Fun, right? So that's all there is to it. Now, to check yourself, which I highly recommend that you do, okay, don't just take my word for it. Investigate it for yourself. What you're going to do is uh, you first have to keep in mind in general what we did. We took this value, divided it by this value, and it equaled now this value. Okay. Now, since you have x as a variable, you're, choo you're free to choose whatever x value you want to choose to plug it in and simplify it a little bit. Let's see if we can kind of prove that, you know, one number equals the other number. All right. So let's choose as x is equal to zero to make our life easy. So everywhere you have an x, then you would be plugging in zero. All right. In other words... Just wherever there's an x tie and whatever, if it's multiplied, just get rid of it. Okay, it's going to cancel. So get rid of all this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this term. Okay, let's see what we're left with. So here we're left with 5, and that was right where we have this term being divided by this term, so 5 over negative 1. Let's see if this is going to be equal. Does this now equal this thing? You had 16 over 3. 16 over 3, and then plus now 31 over 3 divided by negative 1. Now, I, I'm, to simplify this, whenever you divide something by negative 1, it just becomes negative. So it's just going to be a negative now, or we're going to subtract 31, 31 over 3. Okay, let's do now some of the math. So 5 divided by a negative 1 is simply going to be negative 5. Fortunately, you already have common denominators, and therefore you can do this subtraction. So what's 16 minus a 31? If you're not sure, plug it on into the calculator. 
it's going to be a negative 15. And that's negative 15 over 3. What does this simplify down to? It simplifies down to negative 5. And does negative 5 equal negative 5? Well, by gosh, by golly, it does. It does. So there you go. So I know I'm right. Okay. So the quotient here, the final answer is basically this thing down here without all... Oh, Oh, yes, no, it, it is right. But, uh, oh, uh, no, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the mailman. <laughs> that's definitely the mailman. And uh, as long as you don't hear any screaming, we're good. If you start hearing that, I'd be a little worried. Anyway, the answer here is going to be um, this thing without all the scribble on it. That's the quotient, okay? That's the final answer. All right, so um, let me just, uh, I'm going to run because uh, i got to make sure the mailman is still alive and um, also make sure my front door is still intact. Thanks for joining. Take care.